Wait, so can aliens really be among us? Hey, it's Stephen Diener, host and creator of UAP, the Unidentified Alien Podcast. And whether you just started to become interested in the subject or have been investigating it for years, this is the show for you. UAP has become one of the most popular podcasts in the world covering the subject. Don't miss out as I bring you exclusive interviews with some of the biggest names in this field, as well as mind-bending stories that will leave you wondering what the truth really is. Download and subscribe to the Unidentified Alien Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Just search UAP. Welcome to News from the Krabby Coffee Shop with your host, Don McLean, from the adventures of Bradley and Don on My Talk 1071, Garage Logic's newsman, Mr. FYI, John Height, and the crabbiest guy in the coffee shop, Kenny Olson. And news from the Krabby Coffee Shop brought to us by Winona, the Miami of Minnesota, <laughs> presenting the Gator Gauntlet Zipline, an attraction that redefines the words thrill ride situated over an alligator slough in the backwaters of the mississippi the gator gauntlet is an unforgettable adventure that helps you kick up your heels and feel alive as you zip line over hungry alligators that can jump up to five feet out of the water mary from delaware says i've never been so scared in my life thank god i only lost a shoe i don't know how this is legal well, of course, Mary, this this is excitement is the uh, is the excitement you've been waiting for. You've never been more invigorated than when you think you're going to die, but you don't. The Gator Gauntlet offers a priceless experience. All of this is true. There's something crazy, John, going down in uh, Winona right now. These people are out of their minds. <laughs> Not only is there a Gator Gauntlet zip line in was uh, in Winota back in the uh, backwaters there in the swamp, you can also swim with gators. They have some gators that are sort of, kind of a little tame, and you're allowed to get in the slough and swim with them. Uh, you can also ride on the back of a um, what is this thing? It's pink flamingo. You can actually wow. go on flamingo rides in Winona. I want to uh, Winona is proud to be the home of the nation's only live flamingo ride attraction with a flock of specially bred cold weather <laughs> flamingos ready to give your little ones a thrill. Oh, the kids, I see. With the overwhelming popularity of our Swim with the Gators attraction, we decided to really channel our Miami vibe and open up Fly with the Flamingos. Trust us, your kids are going to love it. And you'll be making memories for a lifetime. <laughs> Spots are filling up fast. Get yours today. <laughs> Somebody in Winona has the most awesome sense of humor. I, I I don't even think this kind of sense of humor, is it even legal in this state? Are we allowed well, to have this much fun? You don't know because I can already see letters coming in saying, <laughs> what's wrong with you people? There's so much to do here, um, and I'm on a website called Miami of Minnesota. Uh, if you want to check it out, folks, um, it's a vast page. A lot of work went into it, and it's pretty damn funny, and it's played completely mm -hmm. and totally straight. You actually have to have a sense of humor to realize that this is funny. Well, Ross, I told you we weren't going to use the video. Did you happen to cue it up and get it ready anyway? You know how I am. You can't trust me. Well, of course, because I'm the world's <laughs> foremost number one producer, so I'm well, ready for you. Something like that. Anyway, um, As you know, Megan sent me this this morning, and she's one of these people that doesn't believe China is spying on us, so she's all over TikTok. Uh, so this video <laughs> we're about to listen to came from TikTok. Go ahead, Roscoe. So I live in Minneapolis and today I was reading the Star Tribune, our local paper, and I happened upon this headline. Looking for a fall weekend getaway? Try Winona, the Miami of Minnesota. And if you aren't familiar with Minnesota and Winona, just for reference, the population is like 26,000. So I was like, what does that mean? So I had to read more. And the article goes on to say that Winona residents began calling it the Miami of Minnesota a few years ago because both cities sit in the southeastern corners of their states and both tend to have their state's warmest temperatures, which it points out <laughs> warm in Minnesota, please. But then I noticed this link, miamiofminnesota.com. And what I'm about to show you. And that's is the where most they 
I have ever Oops, seen. Oops, she just said a naughty word. Like, the actual physical you can get rid of her, Ross. I That's where I... Tourism. Yeah, I'll clean that up. It's no big deal, I, by the way. I bailed out of it there, and I went right to Miami of uh, Minnesota. And right on the uh, website, the front page there, right by the Gator Gauntlet, there's a series of three questions. Number one, is it safe? <laughs> we don't like to label things with words like safe. Like, is anything really safe? Uh, are these the same... No, are these the swim with gator gators? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> swim with gators, gators. Yeah, yeah. Are these the same swim with gators, gators? No, these are far more friendly than these. To keep the ride exciting, these gators are not fed daily and are expected to fend for themselves in the backwaters. <laughs> we use the term friendly very liberally. Can children ride the gator gauntlet? Absolutely. If they are old enough to understand how to hold their feet up, then they are ready for the thrill of a lifetime. And finally, do you sell packages? Yes, you can bundle the gator gauntlet, fly with the flamingos, and swim with the gator's attractions into one fun-filled pass for a day of adventure. No refunds will be issued in the event you don't survive one of these attractions. I think you have to read that part really fast, like at the end of an ad. No refunds will be issued in the event that Ross you don't survive Ross is really good at that. Are you, are you on the website, Ross? <laughs> I will have to re-pull it up. I pulled it down no so the video I, wouldn't play. You, did a, you do it fast, John. I can't do it fast. No refunds talking. will be issued in the event that you don't survive one of the attractions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So I was very pleased to find out that Minnesota has a sense of uh, humor and nobody, as far as I know, <laughs> wants to uh, cancel Winona or their tourism department. But uh, my hat's off to them. And you know what? Uh, I would absolutely do live endorsements from, uh, for Winona. I love oh, it down yeah, there. That's, yeah. It's the best part of the state. Did you uh, click on any of the links where yeah, it says I did. Learn, learn more? Then yeah. it actually takes you to yeah, then a you real... Actually Winona, yeah, yeah. Uh, but tourism. reality isn't as fun as what this is. This is yes, exactly. well, and they the have a sixty-two percent safety record. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that we're talking about it, as well as many others, this worked. This is exactly what yeah. they wanted it to do. Oh, and there's great pictures too. There's one of a, a little kid riding an alligator with a thumbs up, like, yeah. "Hey, this is fun." Your kids will never forget the magic of feeding an alligator by hand, riding on the back of our albino alligator friends, <laughs> or even getting in the water and swimming next to alligators while our friendly trainers chum up the water <laughs> in a feeding frenzy. Oh <laughs> so, God! So I never <laughs> scroll past like the midway portion of the page. It's the, so good, isn't it? The kids on flamingos, their faces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, hats off to uh, Winona. You guys have yes. a sense of humor and uh, keep up the good news, uh, uh, the good work. If you uh, haven't noticed, well, the show's almost over and I think uh, you noticed why. Uh -huh. No, no Dawn. Yeah. Is she gone for good? Uh, she's gone for at least today and parts of October, allegedly. But we do still have Dawn in form. Kenny, will you quit saying <laughs> boozums? <laughs> well, speaking of Dawn's boozums, uh, look at, here's I have a list of what we we're going to talk about today. It's a full page. Look what's on the top. Dawn's colors? Colon. colon? Dawn's colon. Dawn's colon. Yeah. Oh, I that's so right. I was so excited. We didn't talk about it at all with the mics open last week. But she, I think it was uh, that that night she had to do the cleanse. And then the yeah. next day, I think she had her first ever exam. And yeah. John and I have both undergone this. Ross, did you? No, not yet. But it's on the schedule for when yeah. I turn 40. No, you should do it now. Get in early. Uh, trust me, get in early. Get in uh, early. And I'm not be, I'm not trying to be funny. Get in early. It, it could make a huge difference. Uh, anyway, and I know she was willing to talk about it, so we were going to spend, oh, I don't know, a good 45 minutes talking about it <laughs> and then move on to all these other fun stories, hold on, that all have Dawn in mind. Uh, let's face it, this show is uh, arranged yeah. around Don's reactions to our yeah. stupid stories. I almost was going to tell everybody just to turn the show off when we first started because Don's oh. not on. No, Nobody I wants to hear you and I. Yeah, yeah. Don's <laughs> not on today, and we don't care. If you turn it off right now, nobody will be hurt. No <laughs> hurt feelings here. Is it, That's... is it possible Don informed me early this morning, in which I forgot to inform you two, that well, she's... 
She's not feeling super well. Ross, you've been taking a beating on uh, social media. So I I was going to be nice to you about this because I actually do feel sorry for you. Um, But since you brought it up, you found out when? At 7.18 this morning. And I found out when? At 9.32 this morning. (laughs) And we start recording, give or take, 9.30-ish. Yeah. In my defense, it was an email that listed a bunch of names. I didn't notice your names weren't on it. So it's not really a defense, but. And here's the problem. You send out way too many emails. I do not. You just have John, you have zero tolerance for emails. John, let's uh, talk about God. let's yeah. talk about what we received on Monday morning. Monday was as confusing a day on my email as I've no. had in several years with Ross's. I email. talked exactly with Dawn about this, and she was not confused at all. Here's what you did: you you sent out your normal Sunday email, and we could talk a long time about how I feel you. How, how I feel about you working on a Sunday. You uh-huh. stop that. That's Ross time. Forget about everything <laughs> on Saturday and Sunday. What are you doing? Anyway, moving on to Monday. You sent an email saying that we weren't going to be on this week and a couple of <laughs> shows in the future. It's a and lie. Then, and I, then, no, lie. no, 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 stop, stop. And then you had portions of an email that were crossed out. There were lines crossed out. I think what you did is you took an old email that you sent a few years ago. Isn't this what you deduced, John? <laughs> yeah, it was that's a, pretty it much. It was an old email that you sent last year or even later than that, and you crossed off a bunch of stuff, and then you wrote some new stuff, and we didn't see it. And both John and I thought, oh, my God, we don't have to do a show this week. Yeah, that's we were awesome. very happy. We thought we were off for the show. So <laughs> almost anybody listening who deals with Outlook – and is a normal worker bee, would understand in three seconds what I sent. Kenny, you just don't look at anything I send, nor have any idea of how Outlook works. Johnny, you don't even use your work email, so I'm sending it to a non-work email. Right, what I those were, it. were cancellations of our weekly records for down the road. Who, I was, wait, no. I was Stop, doing boss. you two a favor by telling you these weeks... We're not going to be recording. And just to show you it, and I mean this only in the nicest way, Ross, what a geek Ross is. They were for cancellations Thanksgiving and Christmas week. in September, what, 18th when you sent it out. What the hell? And all it said was basically the header just said no show. So I assumed, oh, good, no show this when week. You're, when, I, didn't, I didn't open it. When you're middle management like myself and, ye- oh. and, and a yes man, you need to work ahead. And then Kenny who says he doesn't want more emails from me since he's confused, actually created more emails because I needed to send you guys an email that said that was not a cancellation for this week. If you open them, it's a cancellation for down the road. Uh We are recording this week. Uh I sympathize with you guys. I just can't tailor all of my exact needs to you two. As much as I love you, I can't do it. Are you done? Because I didn't hear a word you were saying because I was looking at my uh, emails here. I found the one in question. Hold on. Clear the throat. It goes all the way back to Monday, December 19th, 2022, because is when this email thread started. If you want to get to John and I, we're elderly. We don't like clutter. We don't like you stupid punks and your Mountain Dew and you're smarter than everybody else. BS, okay? That's also not Here's, an email. Listen, listen, That's a listen. note in the invite. Listen, That's not an email. You start a brand new email every single time. So I don't have to click on and get rid of and X out and do all that crap. Here's what I have learned, and I'm being honest here. The next time we cancel records or we move things off of this master calendar that some of us see that you guys would never look at, I will send an email ahead of time that says you are going to see some cancellations come across. It is for these dates. So I will will do a better job. No, that's two emails then. That's no good. How are you ever going to know when we're recording and not recording if I can't contact you? From now on. The only way that you and I are going to communicate. USPS? Is, no, it's uh, with text messages. 
The only time we are ever going to communicate via email is when we have links to send each other. See, but Clickable that's, links. But that's not fair because then I have a request of you. You sent me a text message this morning that is just a link. It doesn't tell me what we're doing with it, what oh, I'm supposed to do oh, with it. I just, Why? I just broke my own rule. <laughs> right, John? How many times have I chastised the people on GL for doing stuff and then I turn around and do it? Yes. That's often. what just... He, That's what often. just happened. He also sends me happened. another email, John, that you weren't on. It was all this stuff with Winona. It had a bunch of phone numbers on it. So yeah. I said, do you want me to contact these people to maybe get them on the air? If so, yeah. when? And he just basically replies, none of that. Just be patient. <laughs> Wait, that seems mean. I don't think I said it like that. But, That's uh, kind of funny, actually. Uh, I have it. It was, uh, it was, I'm not telling you, just wait and find out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. For but me even to that, know. That's one, two, three, that's four emails. You sent me four or five emails just this morning. You did, not me. You know, I'm when I want to really talk to Ross, I just call him. Seriously, ask Ross. Don't I, Ross? If I got yeah. a question, I just yep. call you because I can't and, deal with your emails. <laughs> you know what, John? I've... I've turned into I'm I'm an old person. Do that's as I say, I, not as I do. No, that's that's an old person tactic. That's what I get from my dad. He'll always call me, and he'll always call me when I tell him not to call me. Never call me between <laughs> noon and three. So he always calls he always at twelve fifteen. <laughs> um, and then he follows that call up, which I don't answer with, "Call me ASAP." <laughs> so we're gonna have to resort to what our parents. Do. We're going to have well, to call. I, call before we text. Call before we email. I call Ross because I don't know why. I, I just don't send him emails because I don't, I don't like it's, dealing with It's emails. typically as we it's, approach like events or something, you'll pick up the phone and call me. Yeah. Okay, so he, Ross. <clears throat> always Ross has a thing that says, I can't. I'm in a meeting right now. Always. So then he calls me back. Though, and, and it's. it's and by the way, imagine. it's true. I can start sending you my calendar every day if you want by that. By the way, no. you're one of those people that you update your voice message, and when you send an email, I'm out of office. I'm currently <laughs> in and out of the office today, running back and forth and doing this and doing that. You're one of those nerds. Um, yeah, it's called, being, warn, it's called being a good employee. I have to warn you ahead of time, Ross. I'm going to start calling you, but usually when I call you, I'm... It's 5 a.m. I'm, I'm headed off the rails, and something really bad is about to happen, or I think something bad is going to happen. <laughs> That's fine. <clears throat> so in the future, it'll just be about I... mundane stuff. Just like John knows, <laughs> um, every time I call him, which is rare, you always think, what, that Joe has passed away? I or... think something's wrong, yeah, yeah. immediately. Yeah. I see Kenny, I go, uh-oh, and go, hello. <laughs> I also honestly feel like, Today, it's maybe not where you want it to be. I feel like I am better at emailing specifically you, Kenny, than I was a year ago. You may still be getting too many, but you're not getting nearly as many. And when you're getting them, they're important and pertinent to you. And here's how I know, because half the time I will tell you to do something and you'll be like, well, when did we talk about this? I'm like, well, I, I did send everybody an email that they all read except for you. None of that is. Uh, uh, you actually lost me. I zoned out for a couple of seconds. There. I can't wait till Dawn asks what we did on the show, and we say, I don't know. We just kind of yelled at Ross. For a while. Uh, well, yeah. sp speaking of that, let's actually try to struggle on and do a show without out Dawn. Um, here's the options we have, and we're going to come back and talk oh, about God. maybe one or two of these. Uh, my list is uh, Dawn's Dawn's colon, uh, Winona alligators, triathlete criminals, a big ass whale. The CIA slash Argo, stolen Van Gogh painting. I kind of like this one. Uh, our cars are spying on us while we're having sex. <laughs> and yeah. the government knows what you're thinking. So we're going to figure out which one, two or three stories we can talk wow. about. And uh, we'll be right back. In World War One, American fighter pilots covering a plane's rear position coined the phrase, I've got your six, to mean I've got your back. Through their service, veterans have our backs. Now we should have theirs. Learn more at gotyour6.org using the number six. All right. Uh, continuing on the theme that uh, 
Ross is doing everything wrong. Um, <laughs> we have decided to let Ross pick the stories that we're going to do. And number one, Ross, is a story you sent us over the weekend, the one I called the triathlete criminal. It's actually about a Vermont armed robbery suspect. Police say eluded capture this past week in a vehicle on a stolen bike on foot and in a stolen sailboat. He was <laughs> arrested uh, after he was spotted in a kayak on the river. 52 years old, wanted on accusations of uh, robbery of a store in Burlington, impeding and insulting two police officers and theft of a sailboat and vehicles. Who steals um, a sailboat? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I feel wrong reading this. This is your job. Mickey? Oh, yep. Yeah. We, let do, me, uh, we do need the Mr. FYI news read. All right. Uh, yeah, here we know. Uh, do you have it? You got it? Yeah, I got yeah. it. Go to, uh, go to the paragraph that starts August 30. On August 30th, Burlington police responded to a man passed out in a running vehicle that matched the description of one used in a robbery the week before. When officers roused him, he fled at a high rate of speed, assaulting both officers with the vehicle, police said. That evening, he fled police on foot, then on a stolen bicycle, before he stole a <laughs> sailboat on Lake Champlain. Edson was intercepted by the Coast Guard, but after the sailboat ran aground at the base of Lakeside Cliffs, he fled there. <laughs> Vermont State Police received a tip that he was spotted in a kayak on the Lamoille River in Georgia, Vermont, about 21 miles away from Burlington. He landed the kayak, ran away, and jumped into the river, swam to the southern shore, where he was arrested by troopers and game wardens. Uh, taken to the hospital, he had some injuries from being on the run, according to state police. An email sent to police seeking to find out if Edson is being represented by an attorney. No word on that yet. Okay, guys. Um, if you were the judge in this case, what are you going to do? Well, uh, he did a lot, and the judge won't have nearly the sense of humor that we will have. I, um, I, I, I'd give him a slap on the wrist. Prisons are crowded, <laughs> and it, his crime wasn't a violent one, right? That's a slap on the wrist. Was it a felony? Well, um, I, I armed, think the oh, armed robbery. Thing yeah, yeah and the armed robbery. Stuff. That's a, a felony, isn't it? Yeah. When you bring a gun into well, it. The police chief, I think, is uh, thinking along your lines. Kenny, did you see his statement? No. He, he's, pro he's probably thinking, oh, this, everybody's going to think this guy's cool. The police chief said, quote, because of the unusualness of Mr. Edson's various modes of flight from cars to bikes to paddleboards to sailboats to tractors, <laughs> it's easy to lose sight of the fact that Mr. Edson is a dangerous person. So he's he's trying to cut that off at the knees there. Um, yeah, prisons are crowded. Um, we do something about never owning firearms. You know, in, in my world, you don't follow sentencing guidelines. You just make them up because you're the judge. Uh, and in this case, I'd make up. You never get to own a gun again. Uh, you got to check in all the time. We're going to be watching you. Um, but you know what? Here's a hundred bucks for the effort. Now beat it. I never <laughs> want to see you again. Also, oh, oh, and then a threat. Um, uh, if I do see you again, it's a uh, hundred years to life. <laughs> do do officers when they wake somebody up? Do they typically arouse them? Is okay, that Ross? Hey, no. Did you? That's very funny. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take your very childish um question, and I'm gonna make it serious. Did you uh -oh. see my Twitter account this morning? I did not. I will pull it up, though, right now. Early on in the dark, a first unit driver rolls up on a car parked on the shoulder of the ramp from southbound 35E to westbound 36. A uh, white car, I don't know what kind, flashers were on. Um, first unit driver parks behind him, walks up, looks in there. Guy's sound asleep. He's got something on in his hands. First unit driver goes back to his radio. I hear him say, I'm not waking him up. I'm going to wait for a trooper. And then he proceeded to wheel chalk the back windows. Or the back, <laughs> Excuse me, the back what? wheels. The back wheels. So he, basically what he did is he put big blocks of wood on each side of one of the black, uh, back wheels. And that so if the guy wakes up and decides to flee, he's going to have a problem. Sure. Yep. A trooper finally shows up. He gets him out. 
The guy's doing a lot of explaining, arms moving around, whatnot, this, that, and the other. Uh, Meanwhile, they have already called an ambulance in case this is a medical emergency. They don't screw around. They're not like me. They don't assume, oh, this guy is S-faced. They, they, you know, these guys are professionals. So um, the uh, medics show up. They check him out and walk away, get back in the van, drive away. Uh, They proceed to give this guy the sobriety check. And my favorite is walking the walking the line. I've seen this done so many times. The trooper actually explains to them and then shows them what I want you to do. It involves placing the heel of one foot on the toe of the other foot, you know, walking five steps, turning around, coming back. And then uh, they did some other tests, and then he gave them the breathalyzer. And he went from grabbing the breathalyzer, looking at it, putting it on his belt, and in the same motion, grabbing his handcuffs, <laughs> turning the guy around, and putting the cuffs on him. And this dumbass um, was loaded up, and they brought him to the Crowbar Hotel, where hopefully he's still sitting there. Mm. The, the point of the thing is, is we see this all the time, Ross, where these people just pass out on the street or in the road or on the freeway. It's a, it's incredible. Yeah, I, I, Kenny, I actually know somebody who had that medical emergency that you speak of in which the troopers very quickly decided we're going to break this window and go on into the car. So Yeah, absolutely. And this, absolutely. One, this one was a real medical emergency. Yeah. So hats off to them for doing that. But Yeah, if, if you can't rouse uh, the guy, yeah, that's and the doors are locked, boom, they break in and they take care of it. On, um, on the Dewey test, Kenny, yeah. when they say, can you do, and again, I'm not trying to make light of this. I have no time for people who do that, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're putting other people's lives at risk. Yeah. But the one test that they make you do the alphabet backwards, I can't do that sober. And I think yeah. we've talked about that. No shot. So, but they're, they're not really testing for that. They're just testing for like speech and thought process, right? There's, there's no prepare, way that's the actual test. Prepare to be amazed. Z Y X W V U T S R Q P O N M L K J I H G F E D C B A. See, and I'm so much of a dunce, I can't even verify that you did that correctly. But I'm going to assume that you did. So good, good work. Did, you, you, memor- live, did, did you memorize did, that when you were young? I was. Good, I used to live a different lifestyle. I was just going to say <laughs> you. you <laughs> That was memorized by intention. (laughs) I don't think that that's an actual question on the test. We need somebody in full confidence and will respect your privacy. Somebody that's been hauled off for drunk driving a couple, two, three times, and you've taken the test or around the state or around the country. Uh, We need a real chronic here to email us and tell us what the test is. Because it would be fun to know. But I don't think nobody can do that. You can't just say the alphabet backwards. It lets you memorize it, yeah. yeah. We could one day go down the public safety route, get the, uh, who's the head of the, the state troopers? No, 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 Bruce Gordon. No, I worked with him as a kid. I'm not working, I'm okay. not talking to him okay. on the air. Um, <laughs> Best ever. Start. Is uh, that because John, there's outstanding warrants? Remember on WKRP, Johnny Fever? They had the, the yes, troopers come yes. in and serve him beer and the more beer johnny fever drank the better he was at all the yeah. Yeah. i don't know if you, yeah. you probably couldn't get away with that show today right you'd have complaints no they were still doing it when i got into radio they'd go in for a morning team and they'd yeah. serve them drinks and they'd do the breathalyzer and you know we'd hear these guys these wacky guys uh, you know, Heinz and Berglund and the like get drunk in the air. Of course, with Heinz yeah. and Berglund, you know, they <laughs> might have been oh, already a little, you know. But what I mean is WKRP couldn't do that show because you'd have people complaining, saying they're glorifying the fact that Johnny Fever right, can that drink, he got better, drink and, right, and get right. better at it. So. Right. Here's how it starts, Ross. X, Y, Z. Just say that backwards. X, Y, Z. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Z. T, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Z, Y, Z. X W V U T S R. You just learn it backwards. I, I think I could do it if I took some time, which reminds me, I still need to sign up and take our auctioneer classes, which I really want to do from a <laughs> yeah, few months turns back. Out, uh, I've tried. I've even got it right here. Hold on. 
You were doing it for us off air a few weeks ago, and it was pretty I good. I was practicing this for a while, and I finally gave up. Betty bought, a, bought some butter, but she said, this butter's bitter. If I put my, it in, see, I can't even get to the third line now. <laughs> so, and, and I just went to an auction a few weeks ago, and I still, I my ears can't keep up with the auctioneer. I'm I'm always three sentences behind whatever he's saying right now. Whenever I'm at like a charity dinner and they do the auction at the end, I still have no idea what I'm doing. I just raise my hand and hope I didn't give them thousands of dollars. What I always do is I get the attention of the one guy, the guy that goes, and I make sure he sees me and sees that I'm bidding, and then he'll point to me when it's my turn. And that's the only way I can win stuff. Um, And I did win some stuff at the auction. I actually bought... About four hundred dollars worth of cast iron for twenty <laughs> for twenty dollars. Wow, twenty Have you sold, dollars. Sold any yet? Have you sold I'm not going to sell it. I've decided that my hobby it it's it's time to um, bring my hate filled hobby to an end. Um, <laughs> So you go to a lot of auctions, obviously, Kenny. Participate in them. I should have asked this to uh, Mr. Auctioneer guy. Help me with this. When you so you say you won a few things, but you technically paid for them. Are Correct. you are you the winning? No, it bidder? is a con- like it's a yeah, it's a contest. Okay. You are trying to outbid, you know, in some cases, a good friend of yours. So that's where you would say, even though you ended up paying and purchasing the item, you did technically win it. You were the winning bidder. You won the right. auction. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, weird to think about. One of the items that was up for sale at this auction was the name of our town that was on a sign that was on the railroad depot. And it's, you know, an old sign that was made in the 1800s, and it's the only thing that remains of the railroad depot. See, that's cool. And I had, um, I was, my goal was to spend $500 to get this thing. And I was going to hang it up in my shop or whatever. And then when I was there and I saw it, I thought, well, that would be wrong. Um, I'm going to try to buy this thing, and I'm going to give it to the historical society. Ah. Mm-hmm. And then I started kind of asking around, hey, uh, are you going to bid on that? Uh, blah, blah, blah. And as it turns out, the historical society was there and they ah. were going to bid on it. But they didn't have the same budget that I had. Mm-hmm. So they were going to spend like $200. So me and another guy there, and this guy's got way deeper pockets to me, said said to this gal, buy that sign no matter what and we'll we'll help you out. So the bidding got up to two, three hundred dollars, and she started backing away. And we're like, "What are you doing?" She goes, "I that's that I can't I, I I." And we both said, "Buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it." She panicked. She panicked. Uh, so she bought it, and it wasn't really that much over what she had. And then we both emptied out our pockets and gave <laughs> the historical society all of our cash. So nice. yeah, it nice. turned out really cool. Yeah. So what and is- it helped? It helped that it was about a hundred degrees out and a hundred percent humidity and most people had gone home. <laughs> What's the new plan for the sign then? Uh, the historical society got it and they're putting it up in the museum. Okay. That's cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, do you know about my hobby, Ross? No, you've talked around it before with me. I'm trying, I'm starting to piece it together. You buy cast iron, you resell it at a profit or something. No, I buy cast iron to spite a guy uh, (laughs) because I really hate somebody. Uh, it's a, a steam show, steam tractor show that's in Dalton, Minnesota every year. And every year this guy called the, uh, cast iron guy is there and he sells refurbished cast iron and he sells them at full, full price and i discovered probably three years or so ago that part of his mo is he walks around the swap meet gardens buying up all the crusty rusted nasty cast iron and he buys it buys it for next to nothing and so i fell victim to this i walked the entire grounds one morning i saw the cast iron i wanted to uh, buy and i went back an hour later and it was gone and it was gone at the other place and then the other guy and all the cast iron was gone and i go over to this guy's uh stand He's got like five tables and hundreds of pieces, and they're all full price. And I see all the cast iron I wanted to buy piled up back behind the table. And I asked him, hey, uh, can I? And he goes, nope, can't do that. Um, I'm only selling blah, 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 blah. Well, this made me mad. And it made me so mad that a year later, I was still mad. So what I did is I showed up on the grounds Friday morning, right when they opened. I went around to all the um all of the um what are they called the displayers or sellers at vendors yeah vendors at the swap meet and i bought every piece of cast iron they had 
I fully endorse this. I don't know if it's worth doing it for years on end, but to at least do it one time to send a message, I think is incredible. I think that's so, fantastic. A year Spite's later, a powerful thing. And um, what happened is, uh, I we ended up using one or two pieces, and I gave one piece to my son, and the rest of them just piled up. A year later, I was just as angry. So I went back and did the same thing. But then this year, uh, but then um, I just piled them up. I didn't give them to anybody. But then I went to this auction uh, right before the uh, um, the state fair, and I accidentally bought all of this cast. And the only reason I bought is I knew there was a pile there, and I heard the bidding was only at 10 bucks. I'm like, 10 bucks, Really? I don't know a lot about cast iron, but I know it's worth more than that. So I put up my hand and I ended up buying all this cast iron for uh, 20 bucks, including two of these griddles that are worth over 200 a piece. Mm -hmm. And that stuff lasts forever. Yeah, forever. Um, So then when I got to the the swap meet this year, which was on a Friday, I took a Friday off a couple of weeks ago. I went there. Every single vendor had some cast iron. And it would have cost me a fortune to buy it all. So I only bought, I bought three, which they're called pots with lids, um, also called like crock pots. And, um, I've refurbished two of them. One I gave to a friend. She makes donuts and she uses it to boil the oil. And the one of them uh, went into circulation at my house. They're worth about $150. But listen to this and GLers and do it yourselfers will love this. Um, in order to clean these things in the past, I used lye which is a mm-hmm. caustic chemical and you use it to unclog like sewer drains and stuff, right? And you soak it in lye for 24 hours and then you soak it in distilled vinegar and you get all the gunk off and the rust off and it's a long, dirty process. What I'm doing now is called, I think it's called electri- electrolysis where I've, with DC power, a, a DC, a battery charger, I uh, energize water. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I put it in a tub of water and after 24 hours, all of the rust and all of the old seasoning has come off the piece. I take a little bit of vinegar. I I clean it out. I take a little bit of vinegar, do a little bit of cleaning to the sticky rust that's still on there. And then I immediately reseason them and they come out absolutely perfect wow so yeah this electrolysis thing you gotta look it up it's really easy to do i've known about it for years but i always thought oh that's a good way to burn down the house (laughs) and actually it's not it's it's pretty safe and if you do it right it's not a big deal but yeah never never Uh, but what i've decided ross is this is the end um i'm out of spite i have no more hate in my heart i have all the cast iron i'll ever need i really have got like 30 pieces um, so I'm done. Yeah, it's on to a new hobby. You're not going to wind up selling it all to this guy for pennies on the dollar, are you? No. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm not. And I've thought about, I've seriously thought about the selling it part. Uh, I'm not going to sell it. I'm just going to keep giving it away. It's more fun to give stuff away, especially stuff like that that's valuable and it'll last forever. So That's very nice of you. Uh, Ross, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take all the bitterness and hate in my heart and in my soul and turn it into a positive, Ross. That's what I'm trying to do. You know what? What a positive message. As somebody who would probably be one of the bigger beneficiaries of that, I wholeheartedly (laughs) endorse endorse this process. So please go ahead and do that. Well, that's what the Krabby Coffee Shop is all about. It's turning your hate into something good. There's nothing more satisfying than hating something. And if you can make that a, a good, you have won the day. Thank you. If only I could believe that. Thanks for listening to news from the Krabby Coffee Shop. New episodes drop every week wherever you get your podcasts.